Hey guys, thought I would share my experience so far with owning this ATC toy hauler trailer. This is a 2021 game changer. It's the 28 foot front bedroom. There are a lot of things I like about this trailer. Being all aluminum construction was one of the main things. I've owned traditional wood framed campers in the past and quality of construction seemed to be really pathetic in my opinion. ATC markets these trailers as being world class and the last trailer you will ever have to buy. So maybe I had really high expectations going into this, but I've already had a lot of issues with it. And a lot of things on the trailer have had to be repaired and replaced. I bought this trailer brand new and drove home about an hour on paved roads. And the first thing I saw when I got home was some flexible electrical conduit hanging down under the trailer and it ended up being some broken screws. I decided I would just fix it myself rather than take it back to the dealer. And so I found a bunch of broken and stripped out screws holding the mechanical to the bottom of the trailer. And I ended up rerouting and reattaching a bunch of things. And the other thing I did on this trailer is I had the spray foam installed under the floor. This one did not come with it. Some of them do. And in the process of doing that, I ended up finding a lot of other issues with the trailer. Here's a view under the rear of the trailer. I requested a minimum of three inches of closed cell spray foam. There's probably four inches in a lot of places. And I can show you a picture of what this looked like before the foam was installed. I did not have my fresh water or my wastewater tanks sprayed with insulation. They did spray around to seal around the edges of the tank where they could. And I'm not sure if the factory insulates these tanks or not when you buy the floor insulation package. Here's a view of the electrical conduits under the trailer. These are the ones that were hanging down when I brought the trailer home. And they used to be mounted on some small screws in this area that's insulated now. I moved them over and used these larger bolts that hold the gray water tank in. The way the factory had this routed, that blue hose is your black tank flush and that hose was kinked in between the conduits previously. It should work a lot better now. This is the pipe that your black and gray tanks empty through. There's a clamp with a small nut and bolt at each end of the pipe. And when I got the trailer, those nuts were just barely started on the threads of the bolt and would have fallen off shortly. I'll show a couple photos I took of electrical connectors under the trailer. These are just standard crimp on connectors that are not sealed in any way. These are not right for this application. Anything that is exposed to the weather, the road spray, especially if you were driving on winter roads and this wiring would be exposed to salt or any kind of a chemical de-icer like mag chloride. All of these things are highly corrosive and the copper wire isn't going to have a chance. The gas tank on this trailer is between the axles attached to the bottom of the floor and 
and I decided to take that out to insulate above it because it would be a pretty large area that would be uninsulated. And the way these floors are, it's extruded aluminum and it's basically a giant heat sink. So I was gonna add insulation everywhere that I could. And so I took the fuel tank out and found out there were uh, stripped hose clamps holding the fuel filler hose and the vent hose together. And these were just basic little worm drive hose clamps. And the hose was a marine exhaust hose, which is way too stiff for those little clamps to have any effect on it. And apparently someone had just installed them with an impact gun and never looked back. So I ended up getting some heavy duty T-bolt style clamps and took care of that issue. I had previously heard about people having fuel tank leaking issues on these trailers and I can imagine these clamps are probably to blame. I never had the tank filled before I did this work so it never had a chance to leak but they definitely weren't tight and the hose was not clamped down on the tank or the filler. Another issue I found looking around under the trailer on the fresh water tank, there are three wire connections for the level sending unit. One of them seems to leak a little bit when the tank is full and one of them, the connector is loose and the screw uh, won't tighten or loosen the threaded insert that the screw goes into in the tank is just spinning so I'm not sure if the dealer is going to have to replace the tank or if they can fix that. So when I had spray foam installed on the trailer I removed all the tires and wheels so they could spray the bottom side of the wheel wells and on the passenger side of the trailer three lug nuts on each axle the threads of the nuts were galled to the studs pretty badly. Apparently the studs were damaged during shipping or manufacturing at some point and whoever put the tires and wheels on didn't catch it. They just ran the nuts down with an impact I guess. I was able to do a field repair on those studs and lug nuts with some re-threading taps and dies to get the trailer home and they were holding torque but they are going to have to be replaced. Based on the amount of torque it took to remove these lug nuts I don't think they were tight to the wheel so I can imagine if this issue had gone unchecked for a while it could have gotten a lot worse maybe damage the wheel or a wheel falling off worst case scenario. I do like these entry steps for how solid they are. They're quiet to walk on. The issue is it seems like the door in the frame was not designed with this in mind. The door basically has to bend and flex over the step when you close it. it makes the door a lot harder to close and open. And also the gasket on the door does not make it to the door frame to seal when the step is out. Another thing I've noticed on this entry door, there is no provision to hold the door in the open position. All there is is the plastic wheel at the top corner, which will hit the side of the trailer, but there's nothing to hold it open. The hinges are pretty stiff, so for the most part it will stay where you put it, but it is just free to go where the wind takes it. Another thing I had to replace is this short propane pigtail hose. This goes from the regulator over to your tank valve. When this was installed on the valve, 
there's a crack. It might be hard to see, but it goes over halfway around this plastic knob and it was starting to separate. So I replaced that. The dealer is going to reimburse me for that part and we're also going to replace the other side as a precaution. This is the propane stove in the camper. Suburban brand. It has a pretty large crack in the stainless body. I don't think it affects operation in any way, but seems like it should not have passed any kind of quality control inspection. I also found water on the floor under my kitchen sink and when I investigated that, the ABS drain pipe was leaking. I ended up putting some silicone on this joint just as a temporary fix. And the dealer is going to be replacing some of this plumbing. Some of the joints are very poorly made. So in the process of looking for that leak, I removed the aluminum divider in this area that separates these furnace ducts from the storage area and discovered there's a lot of wasted space under here. I ended up fastening these ducts up to the bottom of the drawers and I left the dividers out just to increase storage area. Also in this area I noticed these wall panels were not really attached to the wall framing. I ended up putting some screws in and some caulking and I was able to look behind them a little bit and there is not a lot of insulation in some places. I can show a couple pictures, but in some of the smaller stud bays, I'll call them, there was basically just a thin layer of foil covered bubble wrap. The storage area under these lower cabinets from the factory is basically useless. They had the dividers set where these holes are, which gives you maybe four inches here. And that's why I left them out. Another thing I did on the interior of the trailer is I caulked all the joints between the kitchen countertop, backsplash, and the wall. Same with the bathroom, none of it was done from the factory. There was also a lot of discrepancy throughout the interior of the trailer as to what they caulked and what they didn't. I do like this 12 volt Norcold refrigerator freezer. The freezer seems to get a lot colder than most propane RV units that I've used in the past. The only downfall is it does take a lot of power. So I'm planning on adding solar panels to the roof and I've got 200 amp hours of battery power right now and still run the generator a couple times a day. This is a modification that my dealer recommended. When you fold the dinette bench up against the wall, they advised moving the attachment point up here next to the window. There is framing in there that you can screw into. You just got to use your best guess as to where it's at. From the factory, the strap attaches 
back here where these two holes are on its own bracket and it is really flimsy especially for traveling down the road if you're on a rough road and what happens is it breaks out the wall framing because this bracket is attached on such a small area of the wall it's still a really poor design in my opinion even just to sit on it it feels really flimsy this is what i've been doing to attach the rear couch in the stored position this strap has a little carabiner on it and there's a spot up here on this bed frame that it fits perfectly this bed frame is attached to the whole wall so it's really strong it's definitely a lot sturdier than putting the strap down here where the factory intended this is the mechanical area between the bedroom and the bathroom with your water heater and furnace i had another plumbing leak in here this was where city water pressure comes into the trailer. I was able to take a few fittings apart and correct the leak with some Teflon tape. I also found a lot of trash and fiberglass trimmings and dust in this area. This is also where your furnace pulls air from, so all of that dust goes through your furnace and eventually you're breathing it. I was pretty disappointed to see what a mess they left in here after construction. Also, this duct passes through a really sharp edged hole in this aluminum sheet going to the bathroom. And that hole really needs some kind of edge protection on it to keep that ducting from getting cut. So when I was vacuuming up all the fiberglass dust and cleaning the trash out from around the furnace area, I came into the bathroom, removed this heat register under the shower to gain a little more access. And I noticed the support that transfers the weight when you're standing in the shower to the floor of the trailer was not installed properly so I ended up fixing that while I was in there. Then there is a small defect in this fiberglass shower enclosure. It's not going to leak just because of where it's at but the whole area around this circular crack is paper thin. Also when I got the trailer the air conditioner in the bedroom would not work. There seemed to be no power to the thermostat. I ended up taking the cover off the air conditioner and found a wire that was not crimped. It was the power wire that should have been supplying power to the thermostat. Uh, just corrected that crimp connection and now everything works as it should. This is the storage area under the front bed. ATC left all of the edges of these Asdell panels exposed and anytime you would brush against it there would be fiberglass fibers and dust shedding off. It just looked really unfinished, unprofessional. I spoke with Asdell directly to see if this was acceptable use of their product and they said definitely not. Um, so the dealer is supposed to be getting me some type of seam tape that will match these wall finishes and we can cover this edge up. There's also a lot of sharp edges under here. Just really poor construction here. These Asdell 
composite interior panels were one of the major selling points for me on this trailer being fully composite there's no wood inside this trailer so there's no chance of mold so i'm definitely disappointed in all the things that i had to fix and there's still some things that are not taken care of yet but i do really think this is about the best quality trailer that's on the market just because there's no wood to rot out they're always going to leak somewhere at some point in time and being all metal and all composite i think it's the best for a long-term solution if you plan to own it for a while if you have any kind of a mold allergy or anything like that it's the best bet so even with all the issues i've had with this trailer i still think it's probably the best quality trailer that's available right now there's a lot of things ATC needs to improve on. They need to hire someone for quality control before these trailers go out to the dealer and really pay attention to some of the details that can make or break your trip. Especially any details that might be safety oriented like your wheels falling off or propane leaks. I would really like to hear from anyone else who owns an ATC to see if you've had any of these problems or maybe if there's something else I need to be on the lookout for in the future. And hopefully this will help ATC improve their product. Here we have a propane tank. And? And it was broken. But we fixed it. No thanks to ATC. <laughs> right?